Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? Um, Orion, well, more specifically, the sword region of this constellation, measuring only two degrees in length of sky, but packed with awesome sights to see. Somewhat centered between the left belt star Alnatak attack and the two knee stars of Safe on the left and Rigel on the right is the Orion Nebula. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, this part of the sky is that good. Also known as Messier 42, this diffuse nebula is about 24 light years across and contains the mass of about 2,000 of our suns. So what to see here? First, the tiny trapezium stars in the brightest section of the nebula. Use lots of magnification to tease out all four trapezium components, and with larger scopes, some can split five or six total stars here. But what else? Well, color in the nebula. Maybe, though not like what photographs show. Seeing color depends on a lot of factors, but largely your own eyes. And next, the aperture of your telescope. M42 is one of the brightest nebula in the entire sky, so it sends lots of photons our way. But as for color, well, some people just never see it visually at night. On our retinas, the cells called rods work in low light and cones in brighter light. So to get more light there, use more telescopic aperture. In a 10-inch reflector, I've seen blue, green, orange, and hints of red in this nebula. But in a 70 millimeter refractor, I just see a lot of gray and a touch of blue. But you can increase your odds of seeing color in the Orion Nebula by doing this. That's right, intentionally ruin your dark adaptation so you're viewing photopically. This will force your eye's cones to work, and you may perceive color then. And now this week's Dark Sky Fact. The Astronomy Club of Asheville, North Carolina got a city ordinance passed in 2008 to reduce light pollution by requiring shields to be placed on all non-compliant fixtures. The local energy company didn't swap out or shield any fixtures during that time, but the problem is being fixed. Find out more about this story at eyesinthesky.com. To observers, the Orion Nebula is sort of like a moth to a light, but don't overlook other targets nearby. Messier 43 is just to the north of M42. And if it weren't so close to the larger nebula, it would be a site many amateurs would repeatedly seek out. A bit to the south is Iota Orionis, here, which has the appropriate Arabic name Nair al Saif, which means the bright one of the sword, and accordingly, it is the brightest star in Orion's sword. To its southwest, just eight arc minutes away, in the same medium field of view, is the wide double star Struve 747. These B-class blue-white stars are not gravitationally related, as the brighter one is a quite distant 1,800 light-years, and the dimmer one three times as far at 5,900 light-years away. Its light reaching your eyes left that star before the beginning of the Bronze Age. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and look a few arc minutes west of there. Dimmer, but similarly spaced, are the stars of Struve 745. Here's the odd thing. They are much closer, just 150 and 280 light years away. And lastly, look just north of M42 and 43. Skip past the triple pairing of 45 Orionis and check out the somewhat random looking open cluster of NGC 1981, sitting 1300 light years away, about 45 light years closer than M42 is. Lots more on these objects in the blog at eyesonthesky.com. Venus sits still in the southwest, but will start dropping quickly towards the horizon, so look for its thin crescent soon. Jupiter is visible most of the night as it continues trekking slowly through Gemini. In the morning hours, Mars gets a lunar visit and midweek, followed by Saturn getting the lunar visitor on the weekend. That's all for this week. Keep your eyes in the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller, wishing you clear and dark skies. Oh.